Good morning and welcome to AWS Center of Oxford. I'm Keshav Kumar here. Today we are part of day two of our AWS DevOps demo. Part of day two, we are going to discuss about what is cloud computing, sorry, what is AWS. Yesterday we discussed about cloud computing. Today we are discussing about AWS. Let us explore ourselves onto today's agenda. Let's have a look at it. We are going to deep dive onto each of the concepts. What is AWS? Why AWS? AWS services, global infrastructure of AWS. Once we are part of AWS, we have two types of services, global services and region-based services. Then if you want to work on AWS cloud computing, what kind of trainings you should take and what kind of certification you can do. And creating account with AWS, launching our first virtual machine as part of AWS cloud computing and somebody. These are the uh, topics we are going to explore. Along with this, if you have any question, I'll be happy to help you out. While I'm explaining, if you don't understand any concept, feel free to let me know so that I can also recap in Telugu or in Hindi. Let's begin. Let, let's try to understand what is AWS. Most of you are already aware in 90s, in 1990s, we had an era of Amazon.com. Still, we are using Amazon.com. We are purchasing a lot of things from Amazon.com. At least weekly once you purchase something, start with book until smartphones, smart devices, lot. So Amazon.com is, is the parent company of AWS. Amazon was started in 90s and they were across the globe. They were doing the business with e-commerce business. And also they have seen the, they predicted the future of their data center need. They were working on data centers, right? They were, they were as part of uh, posting of their applications, part of data centers. That's what they have seen the future. They started the journey in the year of 2002 by doing a documentation. The initial documentation was started in 2002 to 2000 between. The paperwork was started regarding the cloud computing and initially they started with uh, paperwork by two persons here, two key persons if you look at here. One is called Benjamin Black and Chris. These are the two people which they started paperwork on cloud computing. How they started this without any prior background? They already have a background, right? They already have a background called Amazon.com background. So that's the reason they started their paperwork in terms of cloud computing. Until then, what they were doing, they were working with the servers. They own servers. I'm sorry? They own servers. Their own servers. They were working with their own servers. Yes. They're working with their own servers and they're working with their own storage. They're working with their own databases. These are the major things, right? Now we are accessing Facebook.com, Twitter, Instagram. All these applications are using servers. All these applications are using storage. All these applications are using databases. These are the core of it to host a website. Even my website, yesterday I showed you my website. If you go back to the browser, here is a fish, so money.com. Even my website is also using a server which is serverless architecture as part of AWS. This is a cloud binary website. Even this is using a server. Which server? One of the Linux operating system, which is running from an hardware. The hardware is coming from a data center. So they were already in the business of e-commerce business. They already have some data centers to fulfill the requirement of Amazon.com across the globe. And they have seen the, they have predicted the future and they started doing the documentation in the year of 2002 to 2000 between. After the documentation, as you know that Amazon.com is owned by Jeff. 
Jeff Bezos. He approved the project. After looking at the paperwork, he approved the project. Obviously, right? He is the one who is funding it. He should approve it. So after these approvals, what happened is they started doing a first blog. Amazon Web Services blog was launched by Jeff Barron. Barron. Still is working with Amazon. Still is there with Amazon now. Now, after that, in 2005, they started with their own private data center to test it. For small customers, they start launched it. After that, by 2006, they launched as a public platform. In 2006, they launched one particular service first in the month of March 14th, which is simple storage service, S3. Today, it's called as S3, S storage service, S3, simple storage service, which is you're already using, which is nothing but a Google Drive. So they have launched this particular service in the year of 2006, March 14th. By March, uh, July 13th, they launched one more service, Q service. By two th August 25th, they launched another service called EC2. So in 2006, from North Virginia data centers, from North Virginia data centers, they've launched this particular three services. They announced themselves as a public platform, which means you and me can create account with AWS and get started with our own work. And also they started their certification era in 2013. If somebody wants to work with AWS as they are launching one by one services onto their platform. To, so first service is a storage service. Second service is a queue management. Queue management means, for example, you ordered a product from Amazon.com. The moment your payment is completed, you're trying, you see a workflow, right? Your order has been placed to the vendor. Vendor has accepted your order. Vendor is packing your order. This workflow user, right? That's called queue management, queue service. And EC2 is nothing but operating systems, virtual machines of Windows of Linux. On top of this virtual machines only, storage are connected. On this top of this virtual machines only, applications are running. Which application? Amazon.com. And the moment you order something, you need to know the workflow, right? Queue, request, request and response. That is queue management will be taking care of it. That's how they started their services. Even they, they were saying that if you still want to work with our particular cloud computing, if you want to work on our cloud computing, then you should learn and work on it. If you are interested, then you can do also certifications. Yes, eh? If you are interested, then do the certifications. If you want to work with us, do the learn this and do it. Let, let me give a minute so my screen is, yeah. So this is a journey of amazon.com. Sorry, Amazon.com has started their another entity, which is called AWS. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. AWS is nothing but it's API. Every action is an API. Every action is an API. Application, programming, interface. Now I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. This is also an API. You're responding to me. Request and response is coming. If you want some information, you request it through a mediator. It's nothing but an API. It is. So as part of any cloud computing vendor, if you go, it's a request and response. Nothing but APIs. So this is a journey of AWS. What is AWS? I have explained it. Next, why we should go with AWS? Let us explore this. Why we should go with AWS? Because AWS started their journey in 2006. They started with the three services. By now, today. Just give me a minute.
here we go so by today they have 40 241 services whenever somebody start they start with one that's so they grow right if we go to supermarket supermarket has more than one product if you start counting at least 200 products if you go to kirana store you'll have less products so that's the reason you choose between kirana store and supermarket so kirana store is like on-prem data center where you have a limited services where if you go to the supermarket it's like a cloud computing there you have more than one product huge products you have based on your usage you pay for it and buy it so that's the reason aws is offering servers servers are nothing but an operating system so windows linux and unix and mac operating systems also once you are part of their cloud computing platform you can have your own network like this you can go with your own network which means Still, even though you deployed your workload part of AWS, but you can have your own network like this. You can design your own virtual private cloud. This is virtual private cloud. There you can deploy your workload. These are the servers, which servers operating systems. Why do you use operating system is nothing but now you're accessing Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, all are running from our operating systems. Where they are running, they are running from data centers. Now we are accessing it. Same thing with it. That is the reason. Even though you are part of public cloud, you have an option to customize your own network, virtual private cloud. You can secure your account with the help of this particular concept. That is called networking here. Then we have storage. Example of Google Drive. Google has storage, centralized storage. Even AWS is providing centralized storage from the year of 2006 itself. And remote computing. Yes, we are accessing a remote resource using various devices, using applications, mobile devices. And not only that, as you see during the pandemic, people are not able to get the laptops to work. Shortage of laptops. What happened? AWS is providing virtual desktops. If you have one laptop, from there you can log into multiple virtual desktops. You can resume your work. And you can also do a mobile development, mobile application deployment part of AWS Cloud Computing. Since you are using Gmail, you can also your own custom email, which is like uh, using simple email service. And security. Security of the cloud, physical cloud, they will be taking care of it. Once you create account with the AWS, you should take care of your own security in the cloud. How we manage? You're right. Next, uh, you can you can develop mobile application. You can develop web applications. You can develop using cloud native tools. A lot of things. The moment you walk into the uh, mall, mall consists of various things. Similar way, once you log into the AWS, you see a lot of products. And why not other vendors? Why only AWS means? AWS is the one who started the journey in 2002. By 2006, they were public cloud. If you go with the Microsoft, Azure, they started the journey in 2010. Google, GCP, 2011. By looking at AWS, Azure, or GCP, they are developing the applications or services part of their cloud computing. Obviously, when we look at somebody, is already in, invited. Why you want to reinvent the wheel? Same thing it is they were doing it. Experience. Okay. So that is the reason why we go to AWS. And AWS is into public cloud, into private cloud, is into hybrid cloud. Hybrid is done nothing but if somebody using a public cloud along with the private, that is called hybrid cloud. So these are the major benefits why we go with the AWS cloud computing platform. These are the major benefits. Let me zoom it and show you. Once you create upon with AWS, you will have 24 hours, 2, 4 by 7 support, customer support, and uh, speed and agility which means you can deploy your applications within minutes go global in minutes and it's all about apis it also interact with the third-party apis 
customization. You can customize as per your requirements. Then simple automated scheduling. There are a lot of services you have based on the service you consume it. And the other thing is very, very important, pay as you go model. You no need to reserve something, you no need to uh, invest in advance anything, no need to give advance payments to anybody. Just pay as you go model. Security of the cloud, they'll take care of it. Licensing, global licensing, data production acts, all they will take care of it. Once you create account with AWS, you have to take care of your internal security. Streamline disaster recovery. For example, your application is from running from US and you want to do a DR activity. Means DR means more than one location. You want to restore it to the another location. Yes, that is also possible with AWS. And automated multi-region backups. You can keep the same copy of the data in another data centers. So these are the main, main, sorry, main advantages with AWS. That is the reason we are going with AWS cloud computing. For any startup you see, they are hosting their services on AWS. Netflix is running on AWS. Prime is running on AWS. There are a lot of applications are running on AWS. Our cloud binary application is running on AWS. My website is also running on AWS. Why? Because it's cheap, secure, reliable, highly available, fault tolerance. It's all the key features we have. And what I want to show you is their global infrastructure. As on today, their presence is across the globe. They are part of 31 geographical locations. Geographical locations. Example, in India itself, we have two geographical locations. One is Mumbai, the, the other one is Hyderabad. Mumbai was launched in 2016. Hyderabad is launched 2022. As part of Hyderabad, they have launched two physical data, sorry, three physical data centers. Even in Mumbai also, they have launched three physical data centers. Okay. Under one region, three physical data centers. This is one, one of the geographical location. Like this, they have 31 geographical locations. As part of one geographical location, three data centers, which means 99 data centers they have today across this 31 geographical locations. And they are about to launch five regions you see the red color here? The red colors are nothing but they're coming up regions. They're going to launch five. Obviously in each data center, they launch minimum two data centers. In each region, they launch two data centers like this. So they're going to launch 15 data centers. Another three to six months, they'll slowly announce it one by one. So this is the global infrastructure of AWS. Their presence is across the globe. You see the successful application which is running Netflix Prime. If, if I start explaining, there will be a list will be. So why we go with AWS? What are the features we have? These are the features. They are global infrastructure. To make you understand about this particular region with data centers, I have one more diagram. Let me pull the diagram so that I can explain it to you. Here is an example of a region. A region consists of data centers in the name of availability zones. Availability zone one, availability zone two, availability zone three. Customer A, customer B, both will be able to access these data centers. From the region, region selection. For why they are providing these three data centers? provide high availability in, in case of one data center is crashed, another two data centers is remain the same, backups. Now let us move a little down to show you one more example here. Apart from these data centers, they, have, they also have another concept called local zones. Local zones. Similar like data centers, they will be, but um, what is the purpose of this is to provide low latency for web applications. Not only this, there is one more also, they have wavelength zones. Ultra low latency, 
to provide ultra low latency to the mobile and web applications purpose. Not only this, they also have one more concept called outpost. Outpost. Let's say you have a data center. As per yesterday example, we discussed about SBI. State Bank of India has their own digital data center. They want to use AWS also. Then if they ask AWS, they'll say they'll send one device. It's like a physical like device. They'll send it to their location. That's called outpost. And whatever they were used to use as part of AWS, similar way they can access the services using this device. So these are the different features AWS is keep on adding to their particular cloud computing platform. Now let's go back to the, so what all we had understood now, let's summarize until now. You have understood about what is AWS, why AWS, we are ready to look at AWS services, global infrastructure of AWS, you have seen it. Now let's go to this AWS services. Here, I just mentioned few AWS services, but I'll take you to the official website directly. Let's go to the official website of AWS. AWS.amazon.com. Click on sign in. You can also log in and check all else. Click on products. You see the products over here. First starts with analytics. The moment I selected analytics, you see this many services inside the analytics. If I go to application integration, you see these many services. If I go to blockchain, blockchain related. Business applications, these many. Financial management, these are the services. Compute, yeah. Contact center, containers, databases, developer tools, nothing but a DevOps tools. End user compute. Like this, there are 25 categories AWS has. In each category, more than one service they have it. So these are the list of services. If it, this list of services, again, they categorize it into global services and region-based services. So if I take an example of compute, under compute EC2, what is EC2 means? Launching of virtual machines upon the cloud, operating systems, and they are uh, region-based. Region-based means there are 31 regions we have in AWS. The moment you log into AWS, let me log in and show you. I'm logging to the AWS. As a root user, I will be logging in. There are multiple accounts I have it. I'll go with one of the account. We as individuals can create multiple AWS accounts. As a trainer, as a real time, I'm working on it. So I have 12 plus accounts, 12 plus AWS accounts. The same way, even as part of my real time work also, I see more than 12 plus. We handle 25 AWS accounts, more than 25 AWS accounts. So this is the AWS look and feel, console look and feel. And here we have services. Here we have a list of services category wise. One of the service I'm going, which is compute. One of the service I'm selecting is called EC2, stands for virtual servers in the cloud. Click on it. So this particular service is a region based. How can I say region based means there is an option called region selection. If you launch a server here and you went back to the other region and checking, it will not be available. You lost your money somewhere, you're searching somewhere. So that is the meaning of it here. So it's called global services and region based services. As on today, they categorized into 25 major services. Inside each service, if you go and see, you'll have sub services. We can change to global services. Yeah, it is. If the service itself is a region, then you see the selection, right? Now I'll show you one more global service. I am selecting a security identity and compliance service, which means securing of your account, IAM. IAM stands for identity access management, nothing but user management, group management, permissions. So user management is a global service. Do you see? All regions are grayed out. Grayed out means it's a global service. If you have region selection, if you're able to navigate to the regions, that means it's the region service. And that too in your real time, 
your your CIO, CTO, your architect will tell you only one or two regions to use. Since you have access to since you have access to 31 regions or 20 regions, whatever it is, but when you create an account with AWS, by default, you will have access to minimum of 17 regions. Upon the 17 regions, if you want to access other regions which are not whitelisted for you, then you have to raise a ticket with AWS. See, I have access to 18 regions, enabled regions. Here is the 18 regions I have enabled. Who enabled? AWS has enabled. Across these 18 regions, what am I doing? How many servers I launched? How many virtual networks I have? How many subnets I have? You can summarize all this by looking at it in one page. You can see. So like this, you will have access to the AWS global and region-based services. When you're part of real time, you will be only working with one or two regions, not multiple regions. Now let's go back to our diagram. So these services are into categorized into database, compute, storage, DevOps, the containers, and uh, machine learning, AI, IoT, all these categories we have in AWS. I hope it's clear. Now let us move further. Two things we have learned, desktop services we have learned and the nature of it, whether they're global service, whether they are region services. This is what you have learned so far. Now let's move, go ahead further. I'm just clearing up the things. For example, if you want to get started your journey and start working on all the services, which service is belongs to whom? Who should have knowledge on which service? See, we as individuals cannot, can't learn all, all these services, right? Based on our role, roles and responsibilities, you will be working on it. AWS is categorized to four parts. If you want to really want to work with the cloud computing called AWS, then they're saying that to get started, this is a beginner. After this, let's say you want to see yourself as architect, then go with the architect level. No, I want to get into security, go to security directly. No, I want to get into the DBA, data analytics. Oh, I want to get into machine learning directly or I'm from SAP background, go to here. Or I'm from networking background, go here. No, I am a developer. I'm a system admin. If you're a system admin, go to system admin related, sysops. Then after next level of what is system admin means, DevOps. No, I'm a Java developer. I want to learn cloud computing. Go with the cloud practitioner, go with a de uh, developer. After that, go with a DevOps, next level. Like this, there is a role-based learning as part of AWS. To get started for everybody, this is a common thing. It's a theoretical understanding. Global infrastructure of AWS, list of global services, list of region-based services, and how AWS is adding value to your business. Everything you will explore here, theoretical part. Here is a role-based job. If you want to become a successful DevOps engineer, you can do year to year or year to year, but it takes some time. It's not like, you know, uh, for getting into a job, you start doing all these trainings. No, that is the reason what we are doing is we are teaching you about AWS DevOps as per the certification, as per real-time need. After learning this course, you have to spend at least 10 days or 15 days time preparing of this exam. Once you clear this exam, then look for the opportunities, job opportunities. As part of Nokri or LinkedIn, look for job opportunities with the certified logo on your resume. Because the moment you have certified resume on your logo, you start receiving calls, more calls. If you don't have a logo also, you receive calls, but this will open you a lot of opportunities. Yeah. We are teaching you this, you will, get, you will be able to clear this. We are teaching you this, you should be able to clear this, you should be able to clear this. So that is the reason we are we want to add value to the persons who ever start learning this. We can also only focus this, focus this. No, 
again you have to do uh, developer learning again you have to do this also. so so kind of you know dual thing so that's the reason we are clearly focusing on one particular course which is aws devops which is on demand in the market so by looking at this roadmap you can decide your career path after doing this certification look for opportunities or before that also you can look for opportunities next when when can i do my next certificate means after you get the job work for six months then prepare for the exam no need to go any under training again whatever you have learned from us you can go back and review, review recap all the concepts and prepare for the exam clear the exam and go for devops exam and for every exam at least three to six months is a gap is needed every exam is validated for two years only after two years again you have to recertify why it is like this that's what the AWS is handling. Why? Every month, every two months, every quarter, they are releasing new services. So every time they are changing things. That's the reason they want the engineers also should recertify on AWS. So this is about trainings, opportunities as part of AWS. And one more thing which I would like to show you. This outpost I have explained. This I have explained. Okay. How to create account with AWS? Here we go. Create an AWS account. Anybody can create AWS account who has valid email ID, mobile number, billing address, debit or credit card details. They should have their own AWS account. The one who create account is called root user who use their email ID to create account. After that, you'll be creating another user. This guy is going to be your employee, your employee. So real time, when we join any organization, we are here. We are IAM users. We will have required permissions in the name of policy, policy attached to us. Based on our role's responsibility, we will be working on AWS with the help of browser we log in and we perform our duties. Launching of storage, launching of databases, launching of compute instances. How do you launch? You learn during these next three months with us. What is needed, how to do everything will be explaining in terms of cloud computing, in terms of DevOps. Yeah. So account is free for 12 months. And when you're creating account with AWS, they don't charge you, only they charge to INR. Again, that amount will be returned to you within 48 hours. If you want to create account, then I already created a video for that because I already have to will uh, AWS account, so I cannot create again and again. So that's the reason I created account. You see, within five minutes, I created account. Please go through this video, create account with AWS. That is the first step you are supposed to do. After that, launching of servers. Launching of operating systems upon the cloud. Look at this diagram. If you want to work with operating system, what you do, you go and buy a physical hardware. The physical hardware consists of operating system preloaded. But in the real time, what we do, when we go to the cloud computing vendors like AWS, we log into their cloud. We log into AWS, we go to a region because the region consists of data centers, right? As part of a region called Mumbai, there are three data centers. Data center one, data center two, data center three. Why again three? Why a fourth one? It's a duplication one. On one of the data centers, again, one more created. So basically you have three data centers in Mumbai. What we do on these data centers, we launch operating systems. Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac, operations. On top of this, what we run? We run applications. Which application? Prime application, Netflix application, Facebook application, all are running here. Where do they store uh, uh, videos, like movies? They store movies on storage, which is called S3 storage. This operating system is attached with hard disk. This operating system is configuration of CPU. This is called CPU, RAM configuration. 
This is the ISO file, the DVD. From this, they are launched in the operating system. Here is the security. Here is a key and username and password. And videos are coming from S3 bucket storage. That is the reason we are watching movies. Every time they deploy new object, new movies. Yesterday I watched one movie. Today I'll also I'll watch one more movie, web series. All this are we are watching because of these operating systems. And who will launch this operating system is two key persons will be there here. One cloud engineer. If there is no cloud engineer, then the DevOps engineer is the one who, who takes care of infrastructure provisioning. We as a DevOps engineer, we do CICD pipeline application deployment. Hence, this entire infrastructure is provisioned by AWS DevOps engineer. If you are Azure, you are called Azure DevOps engineer. What you do here, similar task you do there. You, you provision this network. This is called network. You provision network, NAT gateway, route tables, sorry, internet gateway, NAT gateway, route tables, security groups, subnets, public private subnets, NATLs, operating system. This entire infrastructure you will be creating using AWS console. That is called using graphically. You can create using CLI. You can create, create using Terraform. You can create using Ansible. You can create using Python with Boto3. These many different ways we can create this entire infrastructure. We can automate. So say simple. How can I create these many things in one go? Yes, you do. First, graphically you learn here. Next, you evolve yourself as a command line. Then we'll teach you Terraform. Then we teach you Ansible. Then we teach you Python with Boto3. If you're interested, you learn this separate it is Python language, you should know about it. So these are the ways you provision infrastructure as part of cloud computing called AWS. So tomorrow I will be explaining, I'll be focusing on DevOps part. Today, I believe you have understood about what is AWS, their capabilities, how they started the journey, cloud computing journey, and what all need to be known before you get started with the AWS. I have summarized it. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, hi, sir. This is Nuru. I'm audible. Yeah, it's clear for me. You can go ahead. So, okay. Uh, I just need one to two minutes. So, I'm like, I am not.